Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So a few years ago, I had this client and I vividly remember this conversation. I was talking to her and she was talking to me about her marketing agency and we were going through the numbers and they were stellar, like rock star margins. She was crushing it. All of her employees were profitable. She had high revenue per employee, like crushing it. This thing was a money machine, cash machine. And I asked her, so what are you thinking? What's kind of on your radar? What are some of your goals? You know, what are you planning on doing next? And she said, I think I'm just going to stop the agency. And I was like, what? This is amazing. Like, like so many people would bust their asses to have the business that she created. It was amazing. And I was like, where did this come from? Of course, I was kind of shocked and said, hey, what do you mean? So, well, it's kind of boring. Like, I know we're really good at it. And I know my team does a killer job. But like, it just doesn't light me up anymore. I just don't get excited about it anymore. It's not fun for me anymore. And if you've been there, I hear you. But here's what I want you to remember, that if you're bored and profitable, (laughs) if you're bored and making a ton of money, like your business is not meant to entertain you. Just remember that your business is not meant to entertain you. So, you know, it's making money, which is its purpose. Its purpose is not to, you know, make you happy in the form of like, making you like occupying you. So here's my, if you're in this position, if you're in like this business boredom, just remember that, you know, if you're making money, if you have a machine that's generating cash flow and you're bored and you don't want to work in it anymore, guess what? That is a perfect thing to sell and earn, you know, and get money for selling it or to have someone else run for you if it's producing a profitable margin, then you can afford probably to have somebody manage that business. You can get hands off of it, go do your own thing, but still be getting some type of benefit ongoing from that business. The idea of just closing the doors because eh, I'm getting bored, I was just taken aback because I was going, wait a minute, why would you ever want to do that? That's the whole point of building a business. Like you've built an asset that makes money and now you're just going to burn it? Like that makes no sense to me. And I initially had that reaction where I was like, wait, this makes no sense. But then I thought about it and I said, you know, I understand the sentiment. I really do. But if we allow ourselves to get distracted, if we allow ourselves to, you know, let our enthusiasm be mistaken for, you know, like like enthusiasm and passion and all this, that's not necessarily where your focus should go. And I think that when we can discipline ourselves and we can realize where the cash flow is coming from and focus our energy there, you start to realize that those are the activities that are actually going to pay you more. And, you know, this person went on to actually, I think, slow down that business, start another business. And, you know, it didn't go as well. And, you know, I root for every business owner to win. I really do. I also acknowledge that, like, that was a huge opportunity that was missed, though. And I think that if you are in that position where you're bored and profitable, just know that, you know, sometimes the exciting thing is actually the thing that will probably render you broke. The exciting thing probably costs money and it takes a lot of time and it's probably fleeting because if you follow your emotions and you follow your passion all the time, what will end up happening is those passions will change because your passion will evolve with you. But I think that some certain things are tried and true when it comes to business and something that is sustainable. One example that comes to mind is I just talked to somebody that was looking at a power session and he's looking at purchasing a 
pet care business. And I love businesses like that. For me, anything pet care, pet related, I'm like, this is going to be a gold mine because, hey, dogs aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Humans do not love dogs any less than we did 10 years ago. There is just zero chance of that not having a customer base. You know, the only issue is really competition. But even then, people are popping up left and right. I mean, heck, we just adopted a puppy two months ago, right? And now we are customers of, you know, pet stores. We're back on Chewy again. And, you know, it, it's a very sustainable business. So I got really excited in helping this person buy this business because I was like, yes, this is super sustainable. This is clear. And the guy has no experience with pet care in particular, but knows that this is going to be a moneymaker. He knows that there are opportunities to modernize, there are opportunities to scale it, and opportunities to make it even more profitable and cash flow for him by hiring the right people in place that are really passionate about this type of service. And all I'm saying is that in order for you to have a business that you love and that makes you money and that helps you accomplish your goals, it doesn't have to be the very thing that you are uniquely passionate about. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that only you can do, that your brand can do. It can be very much a sustainable type of business that you start or that you acquire and you learn the ropes in building a business that way. That's what this person is doing. I think it's great. Hey there, are you on LinkedIn? I love connecting with listeners and other professionals and business owners on that platform. I got to say, I'm really enjoying it. So if we're not already connected, make sure you send me a connection request after this episode. So when it comes to, you know, if you're getting bored, I would rather be bored and profitable than, you know, entertained and broke <laughs> any day of the week. And I hope you would too. So I just want, and two things, right? One is don't be tempted by the fleeting passions and excitement of these new opportunities and new ideas. Like, do more of what's working, stick to the plan, right? And build the sustainable business. And the other thing is don't shit on the people who are building the sustainable business in those different areas who are, for example, my friend who is building his, this pet care business and has no experience with pet care. I don't even think he's owned a pet before. And even if he has, right, the experience level is really low. And I'm sure he's dealing with people saying, oh, you have no business running a store like that. What do you even know about this? Like, what do you even know about pet care? Like, do you even know, uh, you know, what to do here or, or what the best dog foods are or whatever? And it's like, no, but I'll learn. And no, but I'll hire the people who do. And you don't have to have some type of deep, meaningful connection in order to have a successful and scalable business. So stop looking for the depth. Stop looking for the high emotion and really like just remember that this is something that's going to have to last and that has goals to accomplish. I just realized by saying that it's a lot like a relationship. And my advice in finding a partner, not that I'm some expert, even though I think I really lucked out with Jason, I my advice is always to not go with the butterflies and not with the like temporary little adrenaline rushes that you get when you've somebody or you have a crush on somebody or you're physically attracted to somebody, there's a different feeling when you connect on a deeper level, you align in values, you have good conversation and you know that you can last with this person because you know you have the same goals in your life and you know that you can go far, go further and play the long game with that person. I just know because I've experienced both of those feelings and I knew very early on with Jason that was going to be the case. But I've also had those like fleeting little like fling type feelings. And I think with business, it's the same. Like you get excited about, oh, I want to go do that. And I want to go do that. And I want to go do that. And yes, cool. Try all the things, but those are distractions. And if you can just stay focused on the sustainable thing that will work for you, it will be boring. You will do boring things. You will do boring activities. You will not like doing this all the time. <laughs> you will procrastinate this stuff. And that's okay. But those are the activities. Those are the things that will get you to the level that you admire, the level that you see other people at, the, lo the level that entices you to do the new exciting things. The reason why it's enticing you is because other people are doing it because they did the hard stuff first. 
you don't get to shortcut doing the hard stuff. You got to be bored. If you are bored in your business, that's probably a good sign. You probably have good processes. You probably have a good model. And all you have to do is install the right people that will take it one step further. So my advice is go ahead and be bored. Don't let that stop you. Keep following the plan. Keep following your intuition on what it takes to build and to grow that company and to eventually sell it or to eventually turn it into a cash flow machine and create generational wealth because isn't that the goal? So just remember what the end game is and stay focused on that. Eyes on the prize. Keep going. Be bored and deal with it. <laughs> I hope this is helpful. I'll see you on the next episode. Hey, small business owners, are you tired of juggling payroll benefits and HR tasks? If so, I want to introduce you to our payroll provider of choice, Gusto, the number one rated HR and payroll platform trusted by thousands of businesses just like yours. With Gusto, you can streamline payroll, manage benefits, and more all in one easy to use platform. But here's the kicker. When you sign up and run your first payroll through our special link below in the show notes, you'll score a sweet deal, a $100 Visa gift card. That's right. Just a hundred dollars for clicking the link below and get started to claim your reward. Don't let payroll headaches hold you back from building your team and growing your business. Join the Gusto family today and take the first step towards simplifying your HR processes while snagging a bonus along the way. Click the link in the show notes now to learn more and set up your payroll. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.